Viewers, we have been having a great 2020. Um, I've uh, had uh, unstinting support from you all. Uh, we are scaling new highs as a YouTube channel. And I would like to thank Dr. Swami because uh, he has been featuring in many of our uh, you know, high scoring videos, I should say. Uh, and and we, we try to see how we can bring out new things uh, he's actually a, a mine house of information and in, in, a walking encyclopedia. And I'm not praising him. I'm just respectfully <laughs> saying what he is. There's nothing no praise here. Yeah. Uh, it's, this I, is I, I think my officer, myself much higher than you think of me. <laughs> so I can never be flattered. <laughs> <laughs> so, sir, this is a topic that's very close to your heart. You are an academic yeah. first. First you were an academic, then you became a politician. Yeah. And then I was forced to. Yes, yes, yes. So. As an academic, I'm sure you are watching how some institutes who shouldn't be offering social studies as a discipline are starting starting to offer that. I'm giving instances like IITs and, and IISCs also have that now. So what happens is, it's like an osmosis. It yeah. starts at JNU or some other, a, yeah. whatever, yeah. this is social science, and then it starts spreading like wildfire in, in yeah. DC. It's like a planned effort. Someone is setting these things up. Now, we have to look at it from two points of view. First is, of course, we have to straighten out JNU and you have given you a solution as to how that can be done. But is there a larger picture question that should be solved? Why should IITs be taking social science students? Yeah, well, in fact, uh, it's a good question to me because uh, I was a professor at, at right. IIT Delhi and uh, I was called, brought in to develop a department of economics. Um, I would say that you should not call something an institute of technology uh, if you're going to have all these uh, uh, courses, humanities, social psychology, sociology. Then make a call it in, in Indian, uh, Indian University or some university. Right, right, right. A university is a different concept from an IIT. IIT is focused on an area of specialization, research, innovations and there is a it's a concentrated uh, thing what i found uh, of course in my case uh, i had a special utility because the iit students were very bright and i could teach mathematical economics so they just took the, like duck to water right and then this craze for um, uh, management sciences came and uh, they went uh, you know it became an easy transition transition right uh, and therefore you lost them, you anyway lost them to uh, engineering. Right. I think IITs should be not only to give degrees, but in the end motivate the persons to become innovators. This uh, startup companies, all these are, should be part of the education. Right. And the risk taking ability, right. that should be taught to them and uh, how to find out which area to specialize and so on. So, <clears throat> yes, I think uh, by bringing these social sciences and uh, even some art, art subject, uh, we have introduced people who, uh, a, a, from a, a area of discipline, where argumentation has become very important. Now, in the case of sciences, the argumentation is very limited whether you're right or wrong. Um, so, uh, whether right or wrong, uh, you know, that's where you, in, in science, you argue. But in, uh, in social sciences, there's no right and wrong that you can see. There is a right and wrong, but you can't see it. Because the limits of your comprehension uh, are there, and you just don't have, you, know, you, you can't work in five to six dimensions at the same time. Therefore, I think, uh, uh, your point is well taken. Uh, we should now start making social science schools separately from Institute of Technology. So, um, but then here is the hard part. Having added social sciences to IITs, how do you pull it back? Now, because there will be another agitation. They will say, oh, you are depriving us of our livelihood, all the faculties and everything. Don't have to worry about agitation. People still care for their career. Hmm. Close it. 
Supposing the, I, tomorrow I decide IIT Delhi is now going to be IIT Delhi Perfect. and uh, a National University of Social Sciences. And it will be in a different campus. Right. Uh, we could allow, like Harvard allows with MIT, mm. uh, cross registration. Cross registration, yes. That's a good way to yeah, go about it. Yes. And if the students Don't are close the door, but at the same time keep yeah. them separate. Yeah. yeah. And if they. Um, if the students are just start agitating and we say this is not your domain of decision making, we make the decision, who the hell are you? They still continue, close it down. And I'm telling you the students will invariably surrender them. And, uh, they were, and if you have very good teachers and so on, you, you, the refrap students will have no, no say. I think the way we are doing is we are being, oh, they are students, you should not use violence and so on. Who well, is the question of violence? Do you use violence against the police? They will, they damn well use violence against you. Yes, yes. In fact, I have one memory that's etched in my head. There's a pink burqa clad woman who uses a stick to, to hit a fleeing policeman in Ahmedabad. Yes. That fellow is still in coma, I heard. Yes. And I mean, it, it's very, very sad. Yeah. 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 And they'll say, oh, well, you provoked that woman. <laughs> so. No, no, I, I'm very clear because most of the violence is done premeditated by those ideologies which regard violence as an essential part of political activism. And that's communist, fascist, this kind of people. They give BJP uh, a bad name by saying they're fascist. But, you know, they, Sonia Gandhi's father was a soldier in Hitler's army. And her mother was a, um, a youth brigade of uh, Mussolini. So, I mean, yeah, the, she should teach us fascism. Right. How can we teach her fascism? <laughs> you see? Yeah. So, I, I think we are to, I mean, there is fashionable to talk about freedom and so on. All freedom in our constitution is subject to reasonable restrictions. If 19 bracket 1 bracket A, gives you freedom of speech. 19 bracket 2 tells you what the restrictions are, the bounds around it. Yeah. yeah. So therefore, if you think that you have been unreasonably prevented from speaking, go to court and say that, you know, I am, uh, I have not been permitted to speak within the reasonable bounds. If you say tukra tukra, there's no, it's outside there because the 19 bracket 2 says that you cannot talk about the disintegration of the country. Integrity and security of the nation is a restriction permitted. So these have to be executed. The other day what on, on that uh, uh, Citizenship uh, Amendment Act, they said uh, equality before the law. Muslims and Hindus are equal. That's fine. But uh, this constitution doesn't say equality before the law. The Supreme Court has interpreted the, the, that particular article 14 and said equality of equals only. Supposing tomorrow I say, I'm a Brahmin, I'm not getting reservation, but that scheduled caste is getting reservation, but we are both citizens of India, so equality before the law, I must also get reservation. Right. Will they accept it? Will these all these liberals accept this argument? Supreme Court had gone into this question and said, Brahmins are not equally placed as scheduled castes. Scheduled castes have suffered a great deal of handicaps, so we have to allow for them to make up and close the gap. When they become equals, you can talk about equality. So, equality of only equals. I mean, if you, if you knew the law, you wouldn't do it. So I, what, what are we there for? Why are we tolerating all this de demonstration? Close down the JNU. You'll see all these people will uh, scamper back. This whole thing started because the students, leftist, left-wing students identified by name, went and uh, destroyed the server. Yes. That means you couldn't register for uh, courses. They found that as time was going, the new generation was being uh, was anti-nationalist. And uh, therefore, anti-leftist, excuse anti me, they were nationalists yeah. and uh, right. anti-leftists. And they were getting good grades, superior grades. 
and therefore they are likely to be chosen. So, so this is one of the main reasons why this is really neither I'll study nor will I let anybody else study. Yeah. And I won't vacate also. I'm yes. a middle-aged student. <laughs> I'm living on 10 rupees a month. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and complaining when it goes up to 50. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, there's much that needs to be cleaned and let's hope that, I mean, this has to happen. It's, it's water is becoming, you know, going over the head now. And, and some of this cleanup has to be done. But I think I like your idea, Dr. Swami, in that we're not going to close down any institutions, but you're going to split them, separate them, and allow for some sort of a you know, crossover in case of need. But uh, at least that way what happens is the uh, those who are interested in pursuit of knowledge will be able to do so without any such uh, disruptions. That's right. Thank you very much, Dr. Swami.